Okay, we're gonna solve this rational equation. Our first step is to identify a common denominator. Um, so it doesn't have to be the least common denominator, it just needs to have a denominator that they could have in common. And the easiest way to find that is to just multiply the two denominators together. So our common denominator would be negative two times x minus two. And now what we're gonna do is multiply both sides of the equation by this denominator. So what happens when we do that? Notice that on the left, we have an x minus two up here in the numerator, and we have an x minus two down in the denominator. Anything divided by itself is one. So when you have something in the numerator and the denominator, you can cancel it out. So on the left side, we're just left with negative two times eight x plus four. And the same on the right side. You have a negative two and a negative two. Anything divided by itself is one, so we can just cancel that out. So on the right side, we have a three x times x minus two. Now we're gonna solve this. Now that we've, we've kind of gotten rid of the fractions, this is more like a typical equation that you're used to. So before we start moving things around, it's good to always distribute. So let's distribute um, the negative two and the three x. And make sure that you're paying special attention when you're multiplying x times x, then the answer is x squared. Now what we're gonna do is move everything over to one side so it's set equal to zero, then we can factor and solve using the zero product property. So let's move everything over to the right side. Now you could do this in two steps or in one step. I'm moving that pot of that negative 16x by adding 16x and now I'm going to add 8 to both sides to move this minus 8. So I have a 0 equals 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. Now since there is a coefficient in front of the x squared, this makes it a little trickier to solve by factoring. Uh, you could also solve using the quadratic formula. I'm going to go over the grouping method uh, to split this up so I can factor each group and get my answer. So remember when you're using the grouping method, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us whatever the first times the last number are. So multiply to give us positive 24 and also add to give us this middle coefficient. So add to give us 10. So if you think of the different options, hopefully you see that it's positive six and positive four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that 10x and I'm gonna split it into a six x and a four x. And then pull everything else down. So now I'm going to factor, I'm gonna look at these as two different groupings and factor them. So if I look at the first grouping, I know I can divide them both by a three, and they also both have an x. And when I do that, I end up with an x plus two. In the second grouping, I can pull out a four, I can divide them both by four, and I'm also left with an x plus two. All of that set equal to zero. Now, the last step, if you factor it one more time, notice that both of these groupings, you can divide out an x plus two. And when you do, what's left? Three x plus four. So if that's all set equal to zero, we've now factored. Our very last step is to use the zero product property. So we need to remember that when we multiply numbers together like this times this, and the answer is zero, then one of these has to be zero. So either x plus two equals zero, or three x plus four equals zero. And then you just solve these two equations. So we see that either x equals negative two, or x equals, when we divide by three, we get x equals negative four thirds. So after all of that, here are our two answers.